One of the great new features of our Studio Retouching Palette is a backup and import utility. With this utility, it allows you to quickly backup your images from your camera cards by writing them to multiple locations on your system. That way we can ensure data integrity and make sure that we've always got backup copies made before we take and uh, erase our camera cards or reuse them again. Let's go ahead and double click on the backup and import. What you're going to see is an RNDS backup. Uh, dialog box appears. Well, the first thing we need to do is actually set up our preferences to get everything uh, set so our files are going into the right places. We're going to go ahead and click on the preferences icon. If you notice here, we have three different tabs across here, and automatically by default, it comes up on the saving tab. Well, what we have is our master folder. Our master folder is where we're actually going to put our working images. Our working images are the ones that we're going to open up in Photoshop. We are retouching on those images. We're going to, our Pro Select uh, is going to build an album from those particular files. So these are probably going to go either on a master server or on a local machine, depending on how you've got your system configured. Well, for this master folder in this particular case, we're going to add it to my local machine. So I'm going to click my browse button and I'm going to go to my local machine going to my Ron Nichols which is my user ID in here and I'm going to go created a subfolder called digital camera files and that's where we're going to put all of the everything from our job so you can just create a digital camera files folder on your system then we click choose the whole idea is we just navigate to that particular folder now this next section here is a burn folder if you want to burn CDs or DVDs this is where we're actually going to set these burn folders. Now keep in mind this utility won't actually burn them for you but what it will do is when you specify a burn folder it'll drop the images into a folder that all you have to do is drop and drag these onto a CD, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever you happen to use for your media uh, for doing those backups. When it writes it into the folders it will actually segment all your files and create the right size group so if you're going to a uh, a CD, for example, it'll create something for up to 700 megabytes. When you go into a DVD, it'll select the DVD size for you to be able to get the correct amount of files in there for a DVD. Then it will take and make a next folder. If it takes two DVDs to do your job, then it will create a second folder for you. All you're going to have to do is drop and drag those onto your, your into your burning software, and you can burn those. Now, I'm not going to actually burn um, create burn folders because I'm going to actually use an archive folder. Now, this archive folder is where we're going to set a second set of images. We're going to send these images to a second set set, but this is important, it's going to be onto a physically separate hard drive. In this case, I'm putting them out into a RAID unit here, so we can just click our Browse button. I'm going to go on, I'm going out to my Browse, and I'm going to go to my Archive directory here. So open up our Archive Images, I'm going to choose that, and that will send all those images into the Archive directory. If I want to make it sure that those files can't be written over or somebody edit them, I can click this Mark archive files as read only. What that means is somebody will actually have to go in and unlock the files before they can actually retouch on them. We should never have to touch these files, but as long as we've got them on that physically separate hard drive, we have a backup. The next section here is groups. Groups are where we can add different uh, folders to our structure. Now my preference is when I'm actually working with uh, backing up my images, I prefer to back up things by life cycle. I put all my business jobs in a business folder, children in another folder, family, my 2009 or 2010 high school seniors. Some people prefer to do it by month. If you want to do it by month, you don't have to add any groups here. If you do it by life cycle, you can simply add your groups here. If you have an existing directory structure, you can just click the browse button and you can navigate to your existing directories or your existing folders and it will show them here. The next tab we're going to go to is our renaming tab and this shows us various different formats for being able to take and rename our images. Now I've chosen here event name and event number. So what this will do is whatever I put for the event name, which in this case would be my customer's last name, it'll take and add that name there. Then it's going to keep my original camera file number. I prefer to keep that original four digit code for my number. It helps me keep track or inventory my images better. If you want to do a different format, maybe by date, or you can create a custom format here. So you've got lots of different options for being able to decide how your images are going to be renamed. If you wish to renumber your images, you would check that here. You can tell it how many digits you want to have for your renumbering. And when you actually go into the individual job, it will automatically start on the 001 
depending on the number of digits that you've had selected, and then number all your files consecutively. Again, I prefer to keep the original camera file numbers. When I click use event number in event folder name, what that does is when I take and create my job, it'll take and use my job name, then we'll put my job number. My event number is actually my session number, so my studio management software, every time I shoot a session, and I create it in my database, it actually adds a session number, and that's what is going to be my event number. If we go to our next tab, which is the advanced tab, this is where we can set things for a custom media backup size. So let's say, for example, if I'm not using CD and I'm not using DVD, if I want to use Blu-ray, for example, I've got a Blu-ray writer, I could set the size in megabyte for that particular size media. So if you're using something special, this allows you to be able to put a custom number in there to create those particular file folders. The extensions to import, you can see we've got this standard uh, JPEG files, TIFF files, uh, Canon RAW, Nikon RAW. If you've got uh, Fuji, you could put in your Fuji RAW extension. If you shoot video as a part of your files, you might even want to put your video extensions in there, and that way it'll automatically offload your video files that you're creating if you're using like a, one of the Canon 5Ds or something that, are, that uh, enable you to shoot video. This is a very cool feature here, this Create Pro Select Album After Import. What I want to do is every time I create a job, I bring images in, I want to have it automatically build a Pro Select Album for me. So what I need to do here is I need to go in and I can just browse to find my Pro Select application. So what we're going to do is, in the Mac, it's probably going to find it for you automatically. In the PC, you, you may have to browse to find it. Well, I'm into my Applications folder, and I'm actually going to go, in this case, would go to my Pro Select folder which is right here and then I can go and I'm going to click on my ProSelect app. If I'm on the PC it'll say ProSelect.exe and I click open and it points to that particular location. Once I've got all of my preferences set we're going to go ahead and click save and our preferences are set we're ready to go. We've just finished shooting a job it's time to back up our camera files. We're going to go to our palette and click on backup and import. First thing I want to do is I'm going to select the group that I want. Now this particular job that I just shot happened to be a business session, so I'm going to strictly select business. Now at this point you can't see any sources that are loaded in here. Once we've used the palette once it'll actually hold our sources. So we're going to go ahead and click add. It's going to bring up a dialog box for our navigation. So at this point I'm going to go out there, I'm going to select my Canon folder and click choose. So now you can see it's coming out there and selecting my Canon card reader. Next time this will be active, all that you have to do is simply just check the checkbox and it'll add images from there. We're going to go ahead and click Next. We have all of the images that are on the card are now loaded into this dialog. We can decide if we're going to import everything or if we want to take and select just one particular job on here. I'm concerned with the images that were taken on the 10th, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Uncheck All, then everything is deselected. I'm going to click on my first one and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the last image here that's taken on the 10th. So that would be one particular session there and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to check Selected. If I just wanted to import in the whole card, we could just go ahead and tell it next because by default everything is selected. Well, the next thing we're going to do is going to go in here and I've clicked my event. At this time, I am going to type in my name. So our job name in this case is Sachin. So we type in the job name. Now I've also told it I want to use a job number. So my job number, I'm going to look at my studio management software to get my session number. And our job number is 36 seven five and our date is automatically populated now if you notice my first image number is one and it's actually grayed out here the reason it's grayed out is because in my preferences I told it I did not want to renumber the images if I wanted to renumber the images and I had that set of my preferences we could change the starting number here I'm going to go ahead and click next this gives us our log and all we have to do is go ahead and click import and it's starting to copy the files. You can see a progress bar here and you can see how it's taking and it's importing the numbers. Notice my JPEG and my RAW file are named exactly the same. They're both going into the same folder. It's important for my workflow to put that JPEG and RAW file in the same folder. I don't want to segment them into two different folders. We can see how my original file name was IMG underscore 
3626 and it's now named to Sachin 3626 so we've added the name it built my file structure it put the images in the right place it created a subdirectory with my job folder with my customer name and my event number or my session number is all in the folder it also dumped it directly in my business directory once our files have finished copying you'll see import complete to indicate that your job has successfully been backed up from your camera cards